time to add another cooler to the list of coolers the cool things. I mean, CPUs. Yeah, let, let, let's do this. Welcome to Simple Rud. On this video, I'm going to go through not only the unboxing of the Liquid Freezer 240 ARGB, because you know, I could read the whole name, but it's way too much. The Arctic AIO. Now, after that, I'm also going to performance test it. Now, what I'm going to test it against is going to be the NHD15 from Noctua, which is a massive air cooler. And I'm also going to test it against, you know, EK's 360 Elite AIO. Now, if you're wondering about price point, this actually comes in a little bit cheaper than the D15 from Noctua, and it's half the price of, you know, EK's Elite. You know, but EK's Elite's a really good value, so just to be fair, it, you know, six fans, all the cooling, it's definitely worth the, you know, the 200. But that doesn't mean that this isn't worth the 100. And what we're going to see is if the 240 can keep up in cooling. Now, as I keep doing this, I am going to keep adding coolers to the list. So don't forget to subscribe because as I do builds, I do want to test out more coolers and I want to, you know, really get a, a well-rounded view of air cooling, liquid cooling and custom loops because, you know, it's something I have questions about. I've watched a decent amount of videos and I want to put it to, you know, my own test. Um, it's not ultra controlled by any means and there is going to be you know a couple degrees celsius variations as i go through these tests but it should still give you a good idea of where they rank now that i've rambled on enough let's get this stuff out of the box and let's see what it comes with the ever enjoyable unboxing of a new product now actually looking on amazon this was ranked like number five on people's wish lists of you know new AIO coolers and I think a lot of that is the price point and if you've watched Gamers Nexus you already know how the how well the other Arctic coolers go. I have a 120 in the house on my son's computer and it is done amazing so I'm excited to see what the 240 can do. So there's a lot of empty space as you can see but it's not really an issue because everything is in the well. So first come is this box and it sounds like, yep, hardware in a bag. Now, there are a couple bags in there so it's not as loosey-goosey as it seems. Uh, you do have your brackets for mounting and your screws for the fans and the radiators and the cooler and all that fun stuff. So, the box actually did a decent job of containing it. Now for what we really want to see. Oh, wow. So this one actually comes with the fans already mounted. Um, when I got the EK cooler, it did not. But that's okay. That was also six fans, and you've got to kind of figure out which way you're doing the push and pull and what side the radiator is going to actually be on. And you know, that's a decision you're going to have to make with this as well. Okay, so now that it's out of the bag, let's get a better look at this. So you have two 120 ARGB fans or DRGB. Depending on who you're going through, they all have different names, but essentially they're addressable. RGB fans. Now, hate it or love it, this is what all their blocks look like and this one does still have the VRM fan. Now, a lot of people say it's a gimmick and I mean with the high-end motherboards that are already doing such a great job of the VRM, you know it might be a little gimmicky but it is still throwing some air at it and moving the air over those heat sinks and those VRM. So it's still going to be beneficial, just, you know, not greatly beneficial. Now, as you can see on here, 
We do have two cables coming from it. One's an RGB cable and one's a fan cable. Now, if you did want to unhook this fan, there is a little connector right here. So if you think it's gimmicky, you think it's loud, it's annoying, it ends up having issues later on and breaks, whatever, you can come in here and just pop that right off. So their radiators on their AIOs are actually pretty beefy. In fact, it is 38 millimeters thicker. That makes it 10 millimeters thicker than what you're getting from EK. And we'll see if that makes a, you know, better option for cooling. What thicker radiators do allow is a less dense array of your fins, which then allow more air to come through. So yes, you have less fins, which could affect cooling, but you are able to get a lot more air through there and you should be able to cool them off faster. Now the thicker radiator also allows more water, which basically it gives you more of a range for heat. And by that, I mean, it's going to take longer to get up to, you know, your, your idle temp in a sense, or your max temp. And then, you know, it will take longer to cool down as well. But for those short boosts, you know, you're not going to see that heat really get out of hand and it should maintain it a lot better. Next step is let's get this thing on the test bench and let's try it out and see what numbers we get. As you can see, we've got it out on the test bench. I've gone through and already run my thermal test. Now, before we get to those results, I want to go a little bit over the installation and kind of the oddities. So one thing to note first off, these two fans, the little fan on your pump and the pump fan itself, the pump motor, all hook up to one fan connector, right? So you can put it on your pump fan or your CPU fan. I tried both and pretty much had the same results. Now, that also means that your RGB also comes through here and hooks to the motherboard through that. Now what this means is if you're switching out fans, you got to get a little creative. Now I haven't tried to take those fans off. When I put it in the build, I will be flipping them over, but I should be using the same fans. I don't plan on using different fans, but just a little, you know, a little bit of an odd, but the installation was, you know, rather quick. And there is, as you can see, plenty of wire to run and hook up to anywhere on your motherboard. Uh, the tricky part may be actually, you know, neatly hiding that when you're building. It's on a test bench, so I don't really care too much about cable management as long as it's not super crazy. Now, another thing you're going to notice right now is the fans aren't really spinning that fast at idle. So, this takes us into the performance. Let me throw up that graph and kind of go over what you're seeing. So now idle wise, kick this off. It starts off around 31 and it kind of slowly works its way up to around 40, but it really does sit closer to, you know, the low thirties and it takes a while to get to 40. Now, the reason you see this climb is that the fans aren't really moving and they're silent. I mean, I can't hear them right now and I'm right next to it. I don't hear the pump or the pump fan or anything. It is silent. And this is on the open test bench. So running wise, your running temp is 82. And now that is of course a bit of a variation and you do see it drop down to 79 and uh, sometimes it'll jump up to 85, but on average it sits around 82. Now your max is 87. And in fact, I did have one core jump to 89 briefly, but there was just one core. The entire package though, for the most part, the max was 87. And even if you average it out without one core hitting 89, uh, most of the others hit 85 or 86. So you're still sitting around 87 for your max. And one thing I didn't put with the other test, but I paid attention this time. Now you're seeing those temperatures when this processor is running 175 watts of power to it, and it doesn't change from 5.1 gigahertz. It never thermal throttled, and I ran it for quite a while. In fact, I ran it on Cinebench 
uh, two or three times just to verify my results and see if there's anything weird. And this is after running it on Prime 95 and really Prime 95 didn't seem to stress it as much as I thought it would. It really didn't start pumping through until I put it on Cinebench. So if you've got 240 room and or, you know a basic budget not a super crazy budget I was I would definitely recommend this I like the look of it um, I like the thickness of the radiator that is going to be the main thing you have to verify is that it's going to allow the extra thickness of the radiator and the fans outside of that I mean it's it's hard to beat Arctic especially when it comes to the price now of course you get better results with the EK Elite but you're looking at double the price I mean three times the amount of fans so you expect better performance I think I'm done rambling um, thank you for the support don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, let me know what you think of these tests and results and if there's anything you would do different or anything you'd like to see thank you